Today I want to talk about what happens when we have a system of gases, so more than one gas, and how do these individual identities impact kind of the system overall. So when we're talking about gas laws, there's all these individual relationships between the different variables. So we can talk about Boyle's law with volume and pressure, or Charles' law with volume and temperature, or Avogadro's law with number of moles and volume. But when we make the system more complicated and add more gases to it, which is really more of what we'd see in the real world in a lab kind of setting or in our atmosphere, for example, it's a mixture of gases more than an individual system of one type of gas, then, then it gets a little more complicated. So there are rules that govern that and there are relationships that we need to discuss about um, how those gas particles interact with each other um, or how they don't, kind of the things that we have to assume, and, um, and what happens to the pressure of the system when we have different gases in there. So what we're getting into here is Dalton's law of partial pressure. And Dalton is the same Dalton that we heard about, that would be John Dalton, when we talked about atomic theory. So John Dalton is the father of modern atomic theory and he's really the first one after Democritus to say everything is made up of atoms and these atoms have individual identities and different elements have different masses and all these kinds of things. So um, same John Dalton, he was studying gases as well. A lot of those early chemists were. And so let's consider a system here. Let's say that we have a system of gases a and B, and I have them kind of labeled as just different colors. Hopefully you can kind of see that on the screen there. And so if I was to look at this and I'd, I was kind of just contemplating the system just based on the numbers of how many particles I have, which one of those gases do you think would impact the overall pressure of the system more? Do you think gas A would have more of an impact or gas B would have more of an impact? And hopefully you look at this and say, well, it looks like there's more of A. So intuitively, it feels like A would have more of an impact on the pressure of the system. And you'd be right. Your chemical intuition would be correct. And what we're talking about when we're talking about an individual component's impact on the total system is what is called partial pressure. So the partial pressure of a gas is the pressure that is contributed by that particular component. So I can talk about the partial pressure of gas A and the partial pressure of gas B. And what Dalton said is, when I take the sum of those partial pressures for all of the gases in my system, then that will give me the total pressure. So it's just a sum, which isn't very complicated. Um, and it's kind of a nice relationship to take advantage of because we can figure out the partial pressures if we solve for the total or we can figure out the total if we know the partial pressures involved. So there's a couple different ways we can go about doing that. So then what shakes out of this is this relationship between how many particles we have and the pressure. So the number of gas particles has a direct impact on the pressure. As I increase that number of gas particles, the pressure goes up and, you know, kind of vice versa. If I go down in the number of particles, so if I release some, then the pressure is going to go down, which again intuitively makes sense. It's the nice thing about these gas laws. We're getting rid of moles of gas, everything else kind of being kept the same. So thinking constant temperature and constant volume, so I'm not changing the volume of my container. Then there's this direct relationship between number of moles and pressure, and this direct proportionality. So if I wanted to solve for that, for gas A, if we're kind of going back to our example, or any gas, the partial pressure of A, so that's the way that we notate that is a capital P sub whatever the identity is of that gas. So the partial pressure of A over the number of moles of A is going to be equal to the total pressure of the system over the total number of moles in the system, right? Because there's this direct proportionality to it. And if the individual components are all directly proportional, then that means that the total has to be directly proportional to the total number of particles. So that's kind of a handy relationship because then I can rearrange here and solve for this partial pressure ratio over the pressure of the total gives me this number of moles of whatever the component is, A in this case, 
over the number of moles total. And this is called the mole fraction. Sometimes you'll see this notated with an X. So sometimes it's X sub whatever the identity is over X total. And a mole fraction is a decimal. Um, I could make it into a mole percentage, right? I can multiply by 100. And so you see that sometimes as well. Um, I personally like to report it as a percentage in my own personal calculations of things because I think better in percents than I do in decimals. But that's just me personally. Okay, so this relationship is really important. And now let's go back to our, our flask here. So let's go back to our Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure flask with our mixture. And now I'm going to rearrange these guys. It's my high tech videography here. <laughs> Special effects. <laughs> okay. So here's my mixture of gases and I have A and B. So let's think about what we have in common here because if we start thinking about PV equals NRT, well, I can talk about Pivner to PV equals NRT for gas A, and I can talk about PV equals NRT for gas B. And if I'm solving for these partial pressures, then, then that would give me a way to get at those. And I know that you know this would give me information about the number of moles. I know there's this direct proportionality. But maybe I can make it a little bit easier on myself. And there's actually a way that we can rearrange these two combinations of PV equals NRT to make it a simplified view of Dalton's law or another way that we can use Dalton's law if we're given the right information. So let's consider our system again. What are some things that this system has in common? So what would be in common for both A and B? So for gases A and B, we could say they're going to have the same volume, if we're talking ideal gas, because V is just the volume of the container. So it doesn't matter that there's another gas in there. The amount of space that that gas takes up is going to be the volume of the container that it's in. So that means that V is going to be the same for both A and B. What else will be the same for PV equals NRT? Uh, well, R, of course, because it's a constant, right? It's a universal gas constant, so it's going to be the same for A and B. And then also, if I'm doing this in a mixture on my lab bench or wherever I'm working, I'm not going to change the temperature for just one of the gases. I can't heat up just gas A if I have a mixture of them. So that means that the temperature is going to be the same for both of these as well. So, given this information, really all that I have to tweak are going to be my P's and N's. So let's rearrange and get these common variables together. So I'm going to rearrange and solve for, for P for each of these guys. So let's do P for A here. I'm going to try not to get my pens mixed up, but it's going to take some doing. Okay. So we have NRT over V, and this is for A, so the number of moles of A, the temperature for A, the volume for A, and then we can do the same for B if we rearrange and solve for the partial pressure due to B. Then that's going to be equal to NRT over V. Again, with the N being the number of moles of B, the temperature of B, and the volume of B. But what we said is that what we have in common between the two are V, R, and T. So what I can really do is kind of portion out the parts that we have in common, factor them out. Because what I know to be true is that when I add these guys together, so my PA plus my PB, then I'm going to get the P total. And so again, if I kind of combine these guys together, then I get my number of moles plus my number of moles. And then I'm going to take out this RT over V, which is in constant for both. Okay, so we can kind of you see what I've done here, this is my P total then per Dalton's law. 
It's the sum of the partial pressures. And now what I'm saying is that what that is equal to is the sum of my number of moles times RT over V, because these are the variables that are in common for both gases. So we can take them out mathematically and treat them like a constant. So now if I'm given a P total, then I can figure out my number of moles. If I'm given number of moles, I can figure out my P total. If I know things about how many I have of each, then that would give me partial pressures. So there's lots of different ways that we can solve this. So this is another version of Dalton's law. All we did is just get PV equals NRT involved. We just got Pivnert involved.